Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, our question comes to us, and it's an interesting one, from Harold Mandel. And he asks about these little inexpensive vector network analyzers that you can get on eBay. Uh, quite a few different manufacturers make them, mostly in China. Uh, they're not all alike. They're built around open source plans uh, and open source software. So anybody can make them and sell them, but that does not guarantee quality or compatibility. He says, more and more recently, manufacturers are offering a piece of equipment in ever more economic or affordable profiles, and they're called vector network analyzers, or VNAs, or just plain network analyzer. Um, your normal antenna tuner is a network analyzer. It's not necessarily a vector network analyzer. A vector implies that not only do you get the magnitude of quantities, but you get the phase also. And that's where the vector comes in, because any quantity that's measured has a uh, phase angle relative to the input signal. In other words, if a signal is delayed going through an inductor, um, then the output of that is delayed by a phase angle, which is dependent on the amount of inductance and the frequency. So several QST contributors, including folks who work in the ARRL labs, have featured measurements made with these devices. Now, the little inexpensive ones are not the kind you're going to find in labs. You're going to find much more expensive ones. They cost quite a bit of money. Uh, they'll be found in the labs and they will be very precise. I can do a basic vector network analysis uh, with my oscilloscope and my uh, spectrum analyzer here. But uh, let's go on. The problem for me is to grasp a fundamental understanding of how to use these various devices. You and me too. I've tried to find some primers online here and there, but to little use. They all assume you're an engineer. The average manual says things like configure the 2-1 ports with at least 20 dB of attenuation and move your markers to 10 hertz to 10 gigahertz. Yeah. Uh, do you know of any such elementary manual set? No. Do you think someone knowledgeable could write a QST primer article for us beginners? I doubt it. Um, before I jump into uh, taking a look at your question in more detail, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Jan Nichols, uh, Jim Nichols, who is uh, my newest patron. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og, which you see at the bottom of the screen. Now let's jump into this vector network analyzer stuff. First, before we talk about vector network analyzers, we need to talk about what's being analyzed. What's being analyzed is called a two-port network. That means there's an in and an out. Okay, and very often amateur radio practice, this and this are grounded. Um, and then we have this and this active. And this can be anything, not just an antenna, but a piece of coax. It can be an amplifier. It can be a transmitter. It can be a receiver input filter. It can be just about anything. Okay. Now, if you look down here, you see how simple transistors, simple transistors can be made into two port networks. All transistors are three element objects. But you note that there is a common in each end. This is common emitter, common grid, and common collector. Okay? And that way it makes some two ports. Now, there are a lot of parameters that you can use, two port parameters. So if we look at this, there are several sets of parameters. Two port parameters. This is your classic two port device right here, and we saw how transistors could be made into two-port devices. 
and there are a bunch of parameters. There's the Y and Z parameters. There are the H parameters. And then there are the ones most often used, the scattering or S parameters, okay? And if you look at this, you can see currents going in, currents coming out, voltages going in, voltages coming out. That's right here, right here, okay? And these can be converted into scattering parameters. The one of most interest to hams is the um, S11. This is the ratio of impedances, one impedance minus another and plus another, okay? And uh, because impedances are always positive, usually this parameter is positive too. Now there's another parameter called return loss. Now note that S11 is not equal to the SWR. The SWR can be computed from one to one. This is basically the return loss. In other words, if you put a, a, a volt, I think it's a voltage measurement. If you put voltage in and you get some voltage reflected, the ratio of the reflected voltage, this one to the input voltage, is the reflection coefficient, which is the Greek letter R, which looks like a capital. It looks like it needs this, or it needs this, or something like that, but it's a gamma, and capital gamma, that's the reflection coefficient. We can compute the SWR from this. So, you've got all of these various losses and so on, and here we look at how we compute different things to get SWR. Now what do we measure this stuff with? Well, here Tom Fryricks, ham on the front range, longtime supporter of the channel, spent quite a bit of time on the phone with me one time. He sent me um, a letter and in the letter, he included this little device, which uh, has a bunch of uh, things you can connect to to try your network vector analyzer, Smith chart outputs, uh, frequency plots, uh, and so on. And on the other side is your basic Smith chart right here. Now, it doesn't have LEDs embedded in there to show me something, but that's the basic Smith chart. In the Amateur Extra Manual, we introduce the Smith chart and say, there it is. We show how it's made by curling a straight graph back on itself, okay? And we note that there are things called constant SWR circles. And that's it. That's all we do. So this is beyond extra, what we're talking about. Here is a vector network analyzer. This connects to the computer because there is software that we'll look at it. And here's our basic vector network analyzer. I'm going to turn it on. And I want you to notice as soon as it does some Linux-like stuff, and then you get to your actual output, OK? And there are two inputs. This one is called S21. This is S11. OK, so we're measuring. We, we put something into it, and we get something out of it, and take a look at what the network did to it. And there's all kinds of things that you can change on it. Okay, there's lots of uh, controls here on what to do. It's got its own battery in it, or you can power it directly off of the uh, computer. There's a separate input for charging. Do you want to find an input at all? Okay, there's an input here, a USB right there. Uh, can't see it very well. A USB right there, which connects to the computer, okay? And there's a charging port on here too. And these are all slightly different from each other, okay? 
And this is where we run into the problem. Will this thing measure SWR? Yes, it will. But let's look at the menu, okay? Um, this, by the way, is a touch screen. So we're going to look at the menu, and the menu says different uh, tracks and so on. And you've got to go in several levels through the menu to get to the point where you can connect this to an antenna and measure SWR. Now, this thing is written This is a little computer, um, and it's got sensing devices to measure all these parameters. It goes from zero to way up into the gigahertz range, okay? They're very capable little devices. I won't speak to their accuracy because I really don't know, but it will give you a very good initial rough order magnitude of how these things work. Will it measure SWR? Yes. You've got to go through several levels of menu to get to it. And what I found, I, Tom Fryrick's got me all set up. I was going to do a video on this. And then they came out with a software change and it changed the menu. So I could no longer find my way to SWR. Okay. If you are a computer programmer, if in particular, you are a Linux buff, okay? This piece of equipment will seem quite natural to you. Now for the other 95% of us hands, it's gonna be a confusing mess. And that is why I do not recommend it. Yes, I know they're available for as little as $50, which is much, much less expensive than any antenna analyzer. Okay, the reason I prefer the antenna analyzer is it gives you a native SWR reading right out of the box. You can also look at the vector part of it, which would be uh, the resistance and the reactance and the phase angle and all of those things like that. So you can really tune an antenna, which is what we're trying to do with this. Now, what do... Um, beyond extra hams do with these uh, cute little things. Well, they use them to design circuits. They use them to design filters of various kinds. Uh, they can take a look at transmitted signals. They can do all kinds of things. These are designed for, there's a gozinta and a gozauda. Okay, and you connect them to the two terminals here, okay? And you can tell a lot about the network. If you're trying to create a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a band pass filter, a notch filter, or something like that, this is right up your alley. If you're trying to look at the output circuitry of some sort of a uh, amplifier you're building and you wanna know if the output filter is good enough, this is your tool, okay? But, as far as using it for SWR, if the, if the uh, people on high, the high priests of these things, would invent a button on the top level menu that says SWR, then I would recommend it, okay? And you can discover what else it does, which is a lot. Okay, so will this measure SWR eventually? Can I figure out how to make it measure SWR? No. Uh, can you? Maybe. Okay, maybe. Uh, especially if you are a Linux expert or programmer or someone who thinks like a programmer, it'll be the cat's meow for you. And you can measure all kinds of stuff on it. Now, the standard run-of-the-mill antenna analyzers, and I've got three here, and a fourth in a box. The standard analyzers, this is the MFJ. This happens to be the 259 Model B. They're up to the D now. 
This will measure all kinds of parameters. Notice it's got a single port, okay? And it's going to measure your antenna. You can also measure things like, uh, with the D model, uh, the inherent impedance of the coax, how long the coax is, distance to fault, all kinds of things like that. It will give you not only the resistive value, but the reactive value of your impedance. This is a fancier one from Rig Expert. It's the AA230 Zoom. This right here will not only measure these parameters, but plot them for you which is very handy, right on that screen. And if you love that Smith chart, it'll give you one of those too. This has a port down here to connect to a computer and you can do some amazing things with the software. And look at all, I mean, you could spend days and days and days analyzing that dipole, okay? Now this one right here is a more um, inexpensive one. Looks like the battery's already gone dead. This is a SARC 100 antenna analyzer. We'll do all of those things, but it doesn't have a graphing capability on it. But it will connect to your computer, so you can get all kinds of wonderful graphs out of it. I have over here, which I have not yet reviewed, and we will review this soon, uh, one of my commenters, a commenter on a video, suggested I take a look at the, um, oh, and the battery's already gone down in this one. Okay. Anyway, this is a, uh, actually a vector analyzer. It's got C2 ports. Okay. Uh, but what's nice about this is the screen on this gives the menu. And you get right to SWR on it. This is about $200. Um, these are pushing 400 or more. Okay, you can pay anything you want for a rig expert. They make quite a few. By the way, these are made in Ukraine. So if you want to help support Ukraine, that's one way to do it, buy one of their analyzers. It's very nice if you're looking in the band. Now, where I find this a little hard to use is if the SWR is lowest outside the band. It's a little hard to find that. Whereas with this, you can just simply tune up and down and find the problem. Uh, and then you can make the adjustment to the antenna to bring the lowest SWR into the band. Okay, that's a long-winded explanation of the uh, little inexpensive vector network analyzers, which are amazing little tools. If you spend a lot of time with them, you can get them to measure SWR. However, nothing that you do on them will make much sense unless you have beyond amateur extra class uh, understanding of the scattering parameters and so on. Uh, the treatment given them in the, um, hem uh, the, the uh, handbook are, uh, is, is minimal. So there's not much in there about them. This would be something you'd use in an electrical engineering class where you're looking at two port networks and trying to characterize them. Long way around the barn, wasn't it? And there you have it. If you'd like to help this channel, support it, you can go to decastlercom slash support and find a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.